Shalom, brothers and sisters. This is Dr. William Snowman coming to you from With One Accord Ministries. And today we're doing something a little bit different. Uh, we get an enormous, enormous amount of questions from people, whether through you know, email or letters or Facebook or whatever it might be. And it's hard to keep up with it. But, you know, every now and then there's one which I think would address a larger audience. And uh, we're going to start doing some of these kind of answers to significant questions from people who have, have contacted us over the months. And so this is going to be the first of that variety. This one is in the general uh, category of various cult groups, okay? But the the actual inquiry came from a woman, a, a born-again believer, who was concerned because she'd seen, you know, the video we did on the Shriners, the YouTube uh, teaching, which is huge in terms of the amount of people that have watched it, hallelujah, and that she had, she had, she had her father who she stated in this email was the kindest, sweetest, gentlest guy that you could imagine. He was a good Christian. You know, he never had a harsh word to say to anybody. You know, that, that kind of a gentleman. And uh, he was a Mason. And he was, in fact, a 32nd degree Mason, which is, you know, one of the highest ranks you can get in, in American Freemasonry. And she just wondered, well, how could he be involved in something this nasty as, as we are presenting and and not know it. And, you know, I will say this because this is a common thing. I mean, not just with Freemasons, but many people, for example, know Mormons that are, are very fine people. They appear to be good, uh, upstanding um, citizens, so to speak, uh, moral individuals, and, and, you know, very nice people, very good neighbors, and so on. And and yet they're involved in what amounts to a, a devilish cult, even though both the Masons and the Mormons and other similar groups, like the Jehovah Witnesses or the Catholics or whatever, any of these groups, they have a veneer of being nice or of being even Christian in the case of the Mormons and the Catholics. Now, the Masons, of course, make no pretense about the fact that they are not a Christian organization. Uh, they just say they are they're a religious group but not a religion. That's not the point. Here is what I want to tell to, the, to this uh, woman and to other people who have similar concerns about their relatives. It is entirely possible to be in one of these groups, uh, a Mason, a Mormon, a Jehovah Witness, or a Catholic, and not have the, um, and not be like evil. Because different people, all, all these different individuals come into these groups with different backgrounds. Now, now this woman said her father was a born-again Christian, and presumably, he was probably born again before he joined the Masons, although she didn't really elaborate on that. But if you go into something like the Masons with already being born again, uh, you're kind of a little more protected against the toxicity of the Masonic Lodge, which is truly profound. And in the same way, you know, if you are a sincere individual, and, and, and of course most people that are in the Catholic Church are born there, in any case, some people have different spiritual constitutions, if you will, than others. And they're more able to resist evil for whatever reason. Maybe that's in their background. Uh, maybe it's, it's in their ancestry. Because, you know, we always talk about ancestral curses. But in that very same passage... In Exodus chapter 20, the Almighty also says that he will show mercy unto thousands of generations of them that love him. So in some cases, it may be that even though some of these individuals that are in these various false religions are, are good people, um, they, 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 they are good people because they had praying ancestors. They had people back 
a generation or two or three or even a dozen generations that were faithful followers of Yahushua and that were keeping his commandments and that were doing their best to live set-apart lives. And that can come down through the generations just as much as the other thing can, the bad stuff. So I would just say this to, to people who, who know folks like this or related to folks like this, it is entirely possible that this individual could be in the group and just be kind of spiritually clueless, but not be affected by it either. And I know that sounds a little hard to understand, but most, most people, even solid Christians, are not trained to develop the gift of discerning of spirits. They don't have their spiritual radar attuned like they should. And that's why we encourage everybody to develop that faculty by seeking out the rock, the set-apart spirit, and praying for that. Now, that being said, uh, it may be that some of these individuals just appear to be nice and actually they're evil. That's between them and the Almighty. All we can do is look at their fruits. And if, if this, like say, this gentleman that was mentioned in the original email, if he was a good, kind Christian man who had a good witness and, you know, was just a generally wonderful guy in, in his church and whatever, Maybe he managed to kind of go through the, um, the Masonic Lodge and, and just didn't somehow see the darkness, and the darkness did not touch him because he was born again. That's possible. And, you know, you could say the same thing for some of these other people. That being said, though, on the other hand, we need to say that there is still spiritual curses that come down threw this man into his child or grandchild or great-grandchild, for that matter, according to the scriptures, again, in Exodus chapter 20, that the sins of the fathers are visited unto the children, even to the third and fourth generation. So this woman still, even if her father was the most wonderful guy, you know, ever, still she needs to pray. On our website, we have the prayers to break ancestral curses, available there for free download. And she can pray those prayers to protect herself and her children, if she has any, from any consequences. Because some of these people, it's funny, they're almost like a spiritual version of, of a, of a quote-unquote typhoid Mary. You know, someone who, who can be exposed to spiritual poison but not have it affect them, but that they can pass it on to others. And that's the concern. Because sometimes, it's just like you'll hear stories about people that are, that are asymptomatic with various contagious diseases, and they'll go out and they feel fine, but they'll, they'll spread it to other people. In the same way, I think that's partly why the devil does this, is he does this to help spread his evil through the Catholics, through the Freemasons, through the Mormons, Jehovah's Witnesses, whatever groups. So what I would tell people is, if you know somebody like this, and especially if they've passed away, they're in the hands of the judge of the universe, and he knows their hearts. He knows if they were just good people who were deceived, or if they themselves were deceiving their family. That's beyond anything we can do. All you can do is pray and break any ancestral curses, and of course also make sure you have no bric-a-brac or paraphernalia from this ancestor, you know, in your home, like, you know, me memento, mementos or Masonic stuff or Mormon stuff or whatever their, their particular spiritual poison might have been. Get it out of the house. Destroy it by fire. Plead the blood of Yahushua over it and get rid of it because all of this stuff, whether it's literature, whether it's um, paraphernalia, whether it is um, clothing, Whatever it might be, that if it's associated with a occult or cult group, it needs to be destroyed. It needs to be gotten rid of, if possible, burned by fire. That's what the scripture says. So, I would tell people, you may very, if you have a deceased relative who's in like this situation, be comforted. They may very well be okay in the sight of Heavenly Father. If they got into this stuff innocently and they, they never were touched by the evil, they may be okay. There may be some mild spiritual consequences, but again, that's between them and the judge of the universe. But in the meantime, take care of your family, take care of your children, pray to break these curses. And 
and be assured that the Father in heaven is merciful, but he's also just. And some people who are in these groups, they may still carry with them all sorts of spiritual contamination that can cause problems. So be aware, be wise, be wise as serpents, harmless as doves, and above all else, pray for protection, pray for the discerning of spirits, because all believers really should have that, not just pastoral people and, and church leadership. Everybody should be able to discern the spirits that they see in other people to a greater or lesser degree. It would really help the entire body of Christ if there was more of that gift in operation. Okay, this is a brief video. I just wanted to make a couple of points about this because this is a very common question that we get. And I hope this has been helpful. Again, if you find these, um, these kind of teachings useful, we would, we would ask that you would su subscribe and share them and uh, also pray about supporting our ministry because we are a free will. We entirely exist on free will offerings and love gifts. So thank you so much for praying for us. Thank you for supporting us. And we just pray that you would be richly blessed and protected from the lies of the evil one. Hallelujah. Thank you. Shalom. Shalom.